Hi, I'm Tony Peterman. I'm a uh, job uh, coach here at PRC, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the Etsy uh, program that uh, people ask a lot about and don't seem to know a lot about, so we're going to try to fill in some of the blanks today. Uh, first of all, I, I wanted to, uh, to show this uh, opening slide because, frankly, that's what I hear a lot. What's an Etsy? Uh, three years ago or so, uh, somebody came to me and knew that I was doing uh, internet sales on photography that I sold as I, I do as a hobby, but then I do sell pieces uh, online and through other other sources. Uh, and uh, somebody came to me and said, "Have you ever thought of trying Etsy?" And this this is on here is what's what's an Etsy because that's what I said to that that person. I said, "What what's an Etsy?" I'd never heard of it before. Uh, I find that when I talk to people now about Etsy, that that's exactly the same line that they that they use. So. I figure that uh, you know it must be a common uh, common thing that's uh, heard around uh, around the industry. So I left it in here as what's an Etsy as part of the presentation. The and why is it a secret part is my own personal uh, attachment to uh, to the the title, uh, and that's because uh, the company Etsy seems to have an interesting kind of a marketing style, and they don't do a lot of you know external advertising about their company. They don't, uh, you know, have a lot of, uh, you know, trade publications doing articles about what they do. They're a highly successful company, founded about 11 years ago, but they they like having this sort of secret kind of approach to things. In fact, if you ever try to find out what Etsy stands for, and many people have, you'll find that you'll get from if you have talked to 10 different officials at Etsy, you're going to get 10 different responses, including the founder of the company who tells everybody that Etsy is the name he decided to call his new company because he saw it in a Federico Fellini movie called Eight and a Half. And in Italian, it, they kept saying Etsy, Etsy, which means, oh, yes. And so he said that was the reason why he uh, decided to call it uh, Etsy. Now, if you ask him the next week, he has a totally different story for it. You know, he's, he's got a whole different uh, thing made up. In fact, the company encourages their users to go to a website and fill in what they think Etsy stands for. And you, it can be anything. They don't care. So pretty much Etsy is a made-up word. And uh, the company likes keeping it that way. They, they, they sort of have this uh, mystique, I guess, if you want to call it that. And uh, that uh, shows a little bit about their creative side, I guess. Talking about Etsy, the company, what we know, <laughs> what they've told us at least, uh, it was founded in uh, 2005, about 11 years ago, and it is based in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, they focus specifically on e-commerce uh, sales of handmade craft or art items designed to be online ver It's designed to be an online version of the old-fashioned arts and craft show, uh, except it's done online. Uh, they require only, or they they require only that what is being submitted to their uh, their website be handmade materials, not copies. Uh, they do allow for what they call vintage, that is not handmade. Vintage be, being perhaps like an old uh, fifty-year-old, uh, you know, artist artistic style uh, design table. Um, it could be uh, vintage clothing, uh, but it, uh, that's the only thing that is outside of the realm of of uh, handmade products. They deal specifically in art, artwork, uh, that including painting, photography, uh, anything that would be considered art, uh, print art. Uh, they deal in glass designs and sculptures. They, they deal in, in homemade quilts, photography, uh, vintage clothing. They're very strong in jewelry. A lot of people who make homemade, handmade jewelry and in fact we do right here in this building have uh, classes for creating jewelry, so there might be some opportunity for Etsy for them. Uh, they uh, actually uh, deal in homemade bath and beauty products uh, and many other miscellaneous items. So just about anything that can be handmade and might have a value uh, to somebody as a unique item can be purchased through Etsy. Um, the company itself has had huge growth since its startup. Uh, they have 20 million active buyers right now and 1.4 active sellers in their system. In addition to that, they have about 30 million more who are what they call browsers, people who don't have the, 
they're not signed up or registered, but they have the right to go in and, and see what's in there, just, just for their own general interest, sort of a Pinterest type style thing. Uh, they also uh, had last year, 31% of their sales came from international sales. And uh, I know for a fact that that is a big part of their business because my wife, Nancy, is a collector. She's a buyer. I, I, I'm trying to sell, she's trying to buy. <laughs> and uh, she has several collections, which are, are beautiful collections. They're you know, glass art, uh, paperweights, uh, very unique items. And uh, I would say that half of what she orders on Etsy, not because she's attempting to do it this way, it just turns out this way, uh, comes from other countries, from Scandinavian countries, from uh, former Eastern Bloc countries, from Latvia, Scandinavia, I mean, all, all of these uh, different uh, companies that do sell to the United States. Now, there is a, a, a backward flow of sales, of course, as well. People buy American products that are handmade, uh, and uh, they buy them in Europe and, and in other countries. Um, my particular products, I've only sold outside the country a few times, and it's to Canada. So I kind of tend to think of Canada as being our, you know, something not quite too exotic as far as uh, outdoor sales, or out of country sales. Uh, what we wanted to kind of cover today, and this is a huge topic and very tiny type, so I'm going to try to go through this as we uh, and explain it as we as we talk about these individual items. How to become a member? Very very easy to become a member of Etsy. They don't really require much of you except information. You would go to www.etsy.com and you follow the instructions on how to register. Usually when you go to the Etsy.com up in the upper right hand corner there's a register button and you click on that button and it might ask some more questions about do you want to be a buyer, do you want to be a seller because it takes you down different paths depending on which of those you, you want to be. Uh, and uh, you have to be a little careful because for some reason when you get apps from, uh, if you're using Apple products as an example, if I'm like my iPad, when you go in you, you can't find that register button quite in the same location. It's in different places, but it'll be there. You just have to, to look for it. Um, you must be a registered member uh, to buy on Etsy and membership is free. It doesn't cost you a penny to be a member. So if you want to go on as a browser buyer or a seller even, no cost free of charge. Uh, you will be asked to create an account with a username and passwords. Uh, important to remember that when you create your username, it's yours for life. You, you cannot change it. You, so if you, you know, you have to really give this some thought when you put your username together. What will happen is you go to pick a username and there might be 10 that you'd like to use and eight of them are already used by somebody so you can't, you can't use those. So you have to be a little creative in coming up with a name sometime. My particular site, my name is Tony, and I, have, I do photography, so I, I made it Images by Tony. Uh, it took me about six tries to get that because uh, many other names that I wanted first were already taken. But it's important that you remember, once you choose it as your name and that becomes your username, they will not let you change it. If you, you can't even close your account and open a new account. You've got to uh, stick with that username. Um, if you want to be an op a seller account, uh, you have to be prepared to give some information about uh, uh, billing, credit, and check issues, PayPal setup, that type of thing. Clearly, when you put a seller account together, you, you need to have financial information. They need to know, you know how you're going to pay them for things that they do for you and, and also how you will be paid by them if you sell something. So important that you have that information available. <coughs> now, once you have a seller account shop, you're, you're officially in business. You're in your own business as far as they're concerned. You're, you're off to the races. Uh, now you need to fill your, your items, uh, fill your site with items to sell. Um, there's, there's quite a bit of setup time that's required here to put together items. Uh, now I, I limit the amount of items that I have in my account, as an example, to right around 100 because I, mean, I literally could put more hundreds in there if I wanted to. But the more you have in there, uh, for one thing, it's difficult then for uh, someone to come into your shop and you know keep scrolling down, finding more and more and more and more. But it also is because it's easier to when you when you start putting this information in. If you have to put in you know 500 individual items and all of the detailed information that has to go behind those, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, you know it, it takes a lot of time, and uh, you're going to have to be very patient uh, with with that. Um, there, there's quite a bit of setup time because uh, you think of some of the things you need, you need to know. What do you want to say in your personal bio? They usually want you to have some kind of a statement 
uh, that goes with your account so that when somebody looks up your seller account to buy something, they, you know, they have, uh, have some idea who you are, you know? I mean, they, they want to know that you have an artistic background. They want to know that you, you know, that you, you, you've traveled the world in the last couple of years and that's where you've, you've got inspiration for your paintings or whatever. So they, they want that bio. Um, would you like to have an icon to promote your brand? Um, they're real, uh, Etsy's very big on branding your product and that is, can be done by an icon, it can be done by a, a statement, it can be done in many different ways. Personally, I've, I had had myself an icon from many, many, many years ago, sort of a fairly primitive one that I had made myself and I use that and every time anybody looks up my account they see that and that hopefully, eventually that automatically will start to mean, oh that's, that's Tony. You know, we know that, that, that icon. Um, you need to have, at this point, a picture or multiple pictures needed to be downloaded to show your sales item. When you go to add items to your sales account, what you're going to find is that there's the potential in there to put in as many as five individual pictures of your product. And uh, in my case, I sell a limited item. It's the same thing with a different image on it, so I don't have to have, you know, five pictures. But uh, if you were selling jewelry, as an example, or if you were selling um, uh, some type of clothing, then you might find that there are, um, you know, there are different uh, pictures that you'd like to take. Maybe you want to take a picture that shows a bracelet, uh, you know, uh, with a certain color, and so you want to show the same bracelet. It's going to be the same sales item, basically, but now it's got a different kind of stone in it. So you, you know, you, you have a second picture, a third picture, you might show a fourth picture with it some, on some of the a bracelet on somebody's arm, you know, so it's, it gives you that option. One thing that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that is a problem, a little pet peeve of mine because I shoot photos and photos don't typically, you know, fall into square formats, but one of the pet peeves that I have and, and a lot of folks who submit pictures for Etsy is that Etsy loves square. And so if you have something that's rectangular, you've you got to figure out how you're going to print that and put it on your, your seller site in such a way that the potential buyer will, will understand what you've got. Um, there are ways to do it. Uh, it's somewhat complicated, but it's, it, it can be done. Uh, otherwise, what happens is what happens to, like my photographs, which I'll show you later, um, it will show a thumbnail of the item that you're, you're, you have for sale that's in a square format. So you're just going to crop that item. So if, you're, if you have a painting and your painting is an 18 by 24, <coughs> it's going to limit that size to an 18 by 18. So you're going to crop a lot of that picture off. When they, if somebody thinks that they're interested in that picture and clicks on it, when they click on that picture, that thumbnail, and it comes up, it comes up with its, its full dimension. So you know, that's why you know, it's a little difficult. I actually put in my policy statement, right on the policy statement, if people read it, which we'll, we'll show later, that the thumbnails that you see are not in a proper aspect ratio, that they, they will be larger. I'll make sure you click on them because you won't know what the picture looks like unless you do that. So uh, something that Etsy supposedly is working on, they're going to go to a proportional uh, type of, uh, you know, adding of, a, of a material. So uh, how much uh, should you charge? You need to determine pricing, which sounds simple, you know. That, that's, I thought when I set mine up years ago, and I'm no computer whiz by any means, but I, when I started setting this up, I thought, this, this can't be easy, right? I've got an item, it's going to cost this much, and I've got, you've got to think about, uh, are you going to offer it in different sizes? Are you going to offer it in, uh, with, uh, uh, in this, not in my case, but in some cases, you know, with matting attached to it? Um, are you uh, are you going to offer? Uh, are you going to pay? Have somebody pay a premium if they if they want some changes made to the picture before you uh, you know you, you make it for them and send it to them? So it is something you have to think about, and, and you want to make sure you're covering your costs because you got to really sit down and be honest with yourself now about what you need to get to cover your costs for selling that item. If you say it's twenty five dollars that you want to sell something for, and you find out it costs you twenty dollars worth of materials and fifteen dollars worth of your labor to put it together, that's not so good. Now you can always go back and change it, you know, but you you need to understand how to get that pricing structure. Will you offer item variations? Um, that might mean you offer multiple sizes of the same item. So if you're going to offer variations, each one of those variations has to have, be priced as well. Uh, and I, I don't want to make this sound too complicated because I don't want to scare people off. It's not that compli it's not complicated. It's it's 
time consuming. You just have to make sure that you cover your bases. Uh, variations would be, well, I'll stick with my, my situation with photographs. I offer three standard size photographs. That's three variations according to Etsy. So each one of those has to show a dimension uh, on your seller page. It has to show uh, a, a value, a dollar value. And uh, so you have to keep that in mind. If you're going to offer those variations, it's going to something you have to consider how you want to price it. Um, shipping. I mean, you know, most of people who start their own business, like an Etsy type business particularly, they, they don't really think of shipping. You know, shipping is just something that happens. And uh, I really, when I think of shipping, in my mind, I always think of packaging and shipping because it costs you money to buy a, an envelope to send something out or a box if it's something that has to be boxed. And it costs you money to ship it. Um, now, Etsy does help a little bit with uh, negotiating better prices on some kinds of things that you can ship, uh, but that's something that's relatively new. I mean, the, you have to kind of work with them on those kind of issues. Uh, one of the things related to shipping as an example is if you have two items going to the same location. If you're going to charge, say, $4 an item for shipping, and now somebody has three things that they're going to buy for their same location, can you charge them $4 for the first one, the second one, and the third one? You really can't. You've got to charge them less money for the second and third. It's going to the same location. You can't otherwise you're overcharging them. You you can do it, but it's not likely that people are going to be happy when they find out they just paid twelve dollars for something they should have paid four dollars for. Will you have a shipping policy? And uh, we'll in a little bit we'll go through some of what that might mean. Um, shipping policy would be how many days from the date you place the order will I guarantee I'll deliver it for you? Uh, what happens if the shipping Gets lost, if your package gets lost, who's responsible for that? You know, those are those are shipping policy issues, and you have to set that up on your page before you you, you know you actively sell from it. <coughs> uh, some simple things: each sales item is going to need a, a, a description of what it is. We'll, I'll show you a little bit later on the computer how that works. But if you put a, an item in there. Uh, and you're going to sell it, you've got to have a description for it. And that description can be simple or it might be not so simple. Uh, sometimes you can use that job description to sell the item a little bit. One of the things I've always done is try to, uh, I hes hesitate to say make the description more flowery than it, than it is, but I, I've tried to, to be as you know, positive and as descriptive as possible of something uh, that I think is uh, what makes the picture look nice. Because uh, if you just say a picture of a tree, you know, it's not going to grab too many people's attention. So uh, you do need to put a description in. Most important thing when you're putting, when you're putting a seller site to together and you have to put the your information in to get it started, most important thing you need to remember is that you need to think hard about and, and add keywords and phrases. Because all of the uh, sales engines out there operate off of key phrases and keywords. So, <clears throat> so if somebody in, uh, you know, Ohio wants to buy a uh, a tree with fall colors on it, uh, he he's going to go in his search his search engine and type in, uh, you know, red flowers on red leaves on tree or something like that. You better have in your uh, your key words and key phrases, trees, fall, red trees, landscape wall art, anything that that person might have used as a description to call that up. And the more of these phrases and words that you have that are as close to the item you're trying to sell as possible, the more likely your sales engine is going to pick up, uh, you know, pick up your item and have it be part of the list of things that are being shown back to the buyer. I actually did, uh, I think I even mentioned it here, I bought a uh, uh, the uh, idiot's guide to uh, you know uh, uh, to selling on Etsy, I think it was called, and it actually does help. The other thing you have to be a little careful of is by the time you buy that Etsy that that book on Etsy selling, particularly with Etsy, they change very frequently the processes. And I, I know by the time I bought that book and came back and used tried to use it to solve some problems on my my uh, edition of, of uh, diff diff uh, different items. Uh, it was already, you know, it had expired. <laughs> they, they moved on. I tried to use what they say and, you know, finally ended up calling Etsy and they said, oh, no, well, we changed that last week or last month or whatever. We don't do it that way anymore. So you have to be a little careful to get the absolute most recent edition if you're going to use that. But it is helpful and you don't have to buy it. You go to the library, you know, they'll have it. And uh, 
no reason to, to buy something if you because you're just mainly, mainly going to thumb through it anyway and say okay what are the topics that I really need to catch up on here and uh, and if you do that you can just kind of thumb through it at the library and get your answers hopefully uh, and I put on here take a deep breath at the end of all of this uh, information that you're being required because it ta it it really just takes time and it's going to be frustrating but it isn't complicated. I mean, it isn't so complicated you can't figure it out. It's not like uh, trying to, you know, program something. It's 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 uh, it's really just a a time-consuming process, and you need to go back from time to time and get answer get answers from people. I'm going to try to go to to my website to show you where all of this information you you know you're seeing all this information that's being requested. Why do we need it, and where does it need to go? Now remember that Etsy, in the process of registering, will walk you through these steps. You're not going to be by yourself. They'll say, okay, now put this in. Now find this. Now what's, what's the answer to how you want this to be shipped? Uh, do you want a shipping policy? Do you want it? So it, it kind of prompts you through these things. So uh, if you take a look at some of the things that uh, were required, and you, I, I, as an example, in my case, I, I try to keep my items that are in my account to about a hundred because it's manageable for me. If I change things out, if I had to put information in and so forth, I mean I could put hundreds of them in here, but I, I try to I will change the pictures out from you know between the ones that I don't have in there and the ones I do, but I always try to keep a balance of about a hundred in there. Um, so um, I'm trying to find some of the if you look uh, if you look at the thing that says uh, announcements, that's just sort of a general statement that you make and you have to put this in at the time that you're creating your sales account. Uh, just something that you want to say, basically, to people who are looking. In this case, I'm glad you took the time to look at the images. I'm understanding, I'm interested in taking photographs that, to convey the beauty of nature. So you're telling about yourself. People, when people buy from you online, it, it's amazing how many of them almost want to kind of have a personal relationship. I mean, they'll, they'll send you like what they call convo notes you know about why they they liked the picture that you you had and why they needed to buy it. I had a a woman not too long ago who was uh, uh, was going to have a baby. It was a little girl, and her name was going to be Willow. So they bought some Willow tree pictures from me. You know, but then they but they she wanted us to know, you know, yes, you know, this is something special to me, and that's that's what you do with these kind of statements. So if you look under the announcement, you'll see. Basically, <clears throat> what I put in here to set these pictures up, uh, but you put it in one time. You know, you don't have to go back and do this every time you put another another item in. Uh, this is the spot where I also put in the th let people know that the thumbnails uh, below uh, show the images in a cropped format. So you need to click on the thumbnails to see the entire image. That's important because I want them to know that, you know, if they're looking at a picture and it's been cropped, it's going to be hard for them to really understand what that picture is. So, um, go down a little bit here. Uh, gives you a little bit of information about uh, how many pictures that are in here right now are in which categories. I mean, there's, there's old buildings, there's fall colors and trees, there's ocean coastlines, there's winter scenes and city buildings and how many of each of those are in there. So if you just wanted to get in here as a, as a potential buyer and just look at historic buildings or old buildings, you know, you could do that. You could just click on that and it'll just give you pictures of, of that are, are in that category. Um, tells you a little bit about the Etsy sales. I've been doing this for a little less than three years now and I've had 37 sales through them and 55 admirers as they call it. An admirer is someone who likes your shop, likes pictures on your shop, and would like to potentially buy pictures on your shop. And so every time I put a new picture in, they automatically get uh, a, a thumbnail saying, with an announcement saying, uh, these two or three pictures were just added for this person that was your favorite account, you know. Um, see what else I've got here. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me go back to... Go back to all here. Now you have things on here for reviews. I have, uh, I believe, 11 reviews in the last two and a half years. 
of people that have bought pictures and why they were happy and so forth, why they liked it or why they didn't like it. I, I'm fortunate that I haven't, I haven't had any negative reviews for sales that I've, I've put in. Uh, this uh, shop policy is something you have to fill out as part of this information that we were talking about before. Uh, and shop policy really in this case for me describes a little bit about if, if you send me an order uh, I can sell it to you in multiple sizes or different sizes but my limit for size in my case with my own printing is 12 inch by 18 inch uh, picture. If I, I can provide larger pictures than that but if I do I'm going to go outside to a professional lab that's going to take an extra day or two to get this shipment to you. So I work with a, a lab called Impex so I, I have a pretty good relationship with them and I can get things shipped almost as fast as if I do it myself. But it, I want them to know that once it gets past that size there's a, there's a change. I did, I'm not the one who printed it. I'm the one who took the picture but I did not print it although you will get a high quality picture and uh, it'll take an extra day or two to get it. Um, there's some general information uh, explaining the fact that I, I, I don't do any matting or framing, which is very you know, popular with a lot of people. I used to do matting and framing way back in the old days. I don't do it anymore. Um, uh, let's see what else is on here. Photographs available size. Uh, but I guess the purpose of showing you this is that all of this information that is behind the scene, these are behind the curtain things that you have to have the information filled in already. So when you put that, that site online, it's going, to, it's going to answer a lot of people's questions, basically. There won't be questions. Uh, it has uh, information about payments, how you expect to be paid. Uh, it has information about shipping. Uh, uh, tells once again about the uh, print sizes, how in the cases of uh, pictures up to 11 by 14, they'll be shipped in a certain way. After they get larger than that, they get shipped in a different way. They're all shipped USPS. That could be anything. I mean, in your case, it might be UPS, it could be FedEx. Or, you know, that's all information you would have to fill in. Uh, and that uh, photographs up to 12 by 18 will be mailed within two days of an order placement. So it, that's the kind of stuff that you need to fill in. And it's, once again, it's not difficult. It's, it's not even confusing. It's just time consuming. It's just something that you're gonna, every time you put an item in, you, you've gotta go through this process. Uh, I will show you one more thing here. Mm. So Tony, can I ask, so when you um, put an item in there, you have to not only put the item description, but you also have to put it in a category? Yes. Okay, so and I'm had all buildings, you create a category. Yes, and I'm going to, sh I'm going to show that next to where, where how you, the categories come up. I'm going to sort of pretend that one of these is being added and then kind of like I'm, almost like I'm adding one from scratch. Okay, well, let's, let's take a given picture. We'll just grab one at random here. Uh, this is as though I was, I think I can do it here. Uh, I'm trying to show you, if, in order to show you what I'm trying to show you, I have to edit this picture. And I, oh, here it is. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pretend that I'm putting an item in that's fresh. The picture that you see on the extreme left uh, would be that picture. I have to, you have to download that picture in there from some source. I mean, in this case, I have, it's right off my computer in my photography files. I could add up to four more pictures of that item. But in my case, because I just, I, I'm really just trying to sell something that's a, the same thing with a different image on it. I don't really need five things. I could put, and I've thought about this in the past, showing them in a frame. You know, I don't sell frames, but this is what it looks like in a frame. Showing them in tr what I call triptychs, where I have some pictures that they sell better if you sell like two or three together. And uh, if you, you could perhaps show that as a triptych uh, so that they would see all three pictures in one. Um, but I, other than that, for the most part, what I have is a, is a single picture. Uh, let's see, these, uh, then I go down, this, this is all, these are all details that you need to fill in for this individual. If you're assuming we're adding this as a brand new item, okay, to your shop. You need a listing detail that shows you a title. In this case, it's Point Loma Lighthouse Stairway Version 2. That's just an identification for when someone purchases it, you need to know what it is that they're asking for. Uh, you're telling them that this is a finished product. You're telling Etsy, because they're the ones who are going to use this information, that it's a finished product. 
that it's uh, the item is handmade. It falls under an arts and collectible uh, heading. It's photography. Uh, the price has been set by variations, which means that they s it will sell in different sizes at different prices. Uh, I have manual expiration date. That's my own personal. Uh, you do need a general description of each of these items. In this case, uh, this is one of two views looking downward at a lamp. Uh, lamp room of the Point Loma California Lighthouse. I think the graphic design of the two views create a very appealing scene. The light on the stairway comes totally from the open door at the bottom of the lighthouse. That, that description is uh, a way, once again, of, of enticing somebody to pot potentially buy. Uh, it shows the variations that I have currently set up. Now, I can sell in all kinds of sizes. I mean, photos can be anything. I mean, in, in wall size if you really choose to. What I did was I took the three uh, most common uh, standard sizes for photos and I used those as my variations. I used an 8 by 12, a 10 by 15, and a 12 by 18. Now different kinds of prints will have different options for those dimensions uh, but those are the ones I used here and the price is different by $10 on each of those steps. It's $25 for the 8 by 12, $35, and $45. Now these are all things you have to create when you put this in your this item in your in your sales uh, site. You have to uh, to know what it's going to cost. Uh, you have the ability to add more variations, uh, shipping options, three to five business days process from processing time from the United States. Once again, that can be whatever you choose it to be, but you have to stick to it. Um, you could actually go by. Item weight, I don't do that because I don't, the variation on the weight is not enough for what I sell. Um, here's, the, here's the important part, really. I mean, if, you, if you don't get anything else right, this is the important part for you. Uh, you're going to tag these things with uh, specific uh, key words and uh, key phrases. In this case, I, my key phrases and key words, this was under that lighthouse sta stairway, remember was lighthouses, ocean scenics, stairways, old buildings, architecture, Point Loma, because Point Loma is well known enough to have its own, you know, uh, search engine results, and spirals. Uh, I could, you can continue to add, you could add wall art, uh, uh, wall decor, uh, ocean fronts, there's, you can be as, as you, up to, I believe it's uh, 16, that you have, no, I mean, six left, so seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 34. You have uh, 16 choices uh, that you can put in there for these key words. But this is really, really important because that's, all those search engines, that's what they go by. They go by what you're, somebody's looking for something, they have a very generic term, like lighthouse will be what somebody's searching for, and then that will then uh, direct them to people who have pictures of lighthouses. I mean, and the, those pictures uh, or, or in artwork or whatever else uh, that you're, you, you have a lighthouse on. Uh, so that's real important to make sure that those get filled out as accurately as you can. But you can see the difference in it. The, the thing, once again, the irritating thing to me and many others is the fact, if you take a look at that one we just entered as an item here, where the cursor is, and you see what the actual picture is, it's quite a difference. You know, it's it's a significant it's a significant different uh, picture in, in one than in the other. So, you know, it's one of those things you have to put up with. And as long as you describe it to them and explain it to people before they buy, apparently it's uh, something that they accept. So, but uh, what do, what do you get from Etsy for doing all this? I mean, Etsy's got to provide something other than a, you know, a place for you to put a picture up. Uh, one of the things that they do is provide a connection to individuals, groups, committees that. Uh, can help you redesign and grow your shop's business. They're a good source of information when you need help. They, they are very helpful as far as with the setups. Uh, and they also are very supportive of this, uh, what they call the community, the Etsy community, which means that um, one of the examples of that uh, could be uh, a group that will, I'm trying to think of the term that they use, what they call it, a treasury list. People will get together and say, I have a theme. That theme is, uh, American flags, and they will gather up everything item-wise that has an American flag on it. And it can be a flag, it can be a, 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 shirt, a sweatshirt with a flag on it, it can be a, 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 a hat, it can be anything. 
And what they do is they collect literally dozens of those items. And if you're put in one of their treasury lists, then if I had a picture of a flag, that would go in there as well. And when people are trying to buy things, they come in and they say, well, let me look at this treasury list. And if they click on my flag and not on the person's flag who had, uh, had it printed on their sweatshirt, then uh, that will come automatically to my shop. So it's almost like they, that, that, sh that buyer came to me directly, uh, even though they actually came to me only because they were part of a bigger group, or community group of pictures of a, of a certain topic. So that's something that's very helpful to uh, promoting your sales. Uh, one of the things that they do, Etsy will do, is provide extremely helpful reports that help you understand what's going on with your shop and your sales. Some of these are seller reports. A lot of them are seller reports. Uh, I was hoping to show you some here, but I'd have to get back into my, my internet, and that probably is a little complicated for me right at the moment. Um, but uh, I can explain them to you a little bit. Uh, they, uh, the sales lists are promoted uh, listing analytics by month. You get a, you know, get email, they'll email it to you and show you what your, how many people looked at your shop, uh, which picture, pictures did they look at, uh, what was the source of their, uh, their path into your, into your website? Uh, was it through uh, uh, a search engine, a general search engine? Was it through Etsy search engine? Did it come from a promoted product? You know, so it gives you that kind of information. It's very helpful to know where you're getting the most bang for your buck on, uh, on your promoting your products. Um, it'll give you a list called top performing items uh, so that you can look at everything that you have on on the uh, site and find out how many times it's been looked at, how many times it's sold, and so forth. Um, which gives you, that, that helps you in the sense that you, you can go back now. If you find something selling, you know, is, is being viewed and sold repeatedly, uh, you might want to emphasize that one a little more by moving it up in the, in the, in the group that, uh, that uh, comes up as the, uh, as the thumbnails. It also will tell you when something's not been looked at and uh, as I said, I keep mine to about 100, but I can add additional pictures. If I see something that hasn't been looked at very much that's been out there for a while, I can take that one off. And why waste space you know, if it's something that people are not interested in? Um, uh, it gives you a daily shop activity report. Uh, once again, finding out who's looking at what. <coughs> it names individuals that are favoriting your shop. Uh, or special uh, specific items in your shop. Um, it's, it's kind of important to get the favor, favoriting label because what happens is those people, once they favorite your shop, will always get every, will get a copy of any new thing that you put into your shop. So it's automatic. It's an automatic promotion of your, of your uh, items uh, to those that already have an interest in what you do. Um, it has listing management, which gives historical activity on shop items. Um, buyer reviews uh, of your delivery and quality performance. So kind of important to get that review feedback as well. Uh, what does Etsy do for me now? One of the most helpful things they do for me uh, is they handle the money. Uh, I've had a web, uh, I've had a web bef site before where you have to kind of handle your own money, your own uh, merchant account and so forth, and it's no fun, you know. Uh, but Etsy handles all the money. Uh, when an order comes in, they notify me that it's this such and such order came in. It's for this picture. Uh, here's how much, what the size is for that picture. Um, here's the name of the buyer and the address. Here's the expected delivery date based on the information that I put in for delivery. Um, and uh, they collect the money. And they collect the money through PayPal, through credit cards, through checks, through any number of ways. Um, and uh, if somebody, you know, has swindled you, I guess, in a way, you're, you don't pay the price for it. Etsy pays the price for it. Uh, so they still maintain the connection of you to your buyer because once they tell you somebody has placed this order and here's the name and the address of that person, it's all up to you to communicate with that person after that. Uh, and I like that because then you're the one that gets to send an email to that person saying, I see that you placed an order for one of my prints. Thank you very much. Da, 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 da. And you can kind of, you know, promote future business that way. So, Tony, if someone <coughs> does a, a bogus credit card 
number, like you, do you only get notified once the money is verified? Uh, I asking? get I, I get notified once it's been paid is the way they once put it yeah paid. once the way so if I guess they wait until they verify okay. but uh, once it gets paid then they they pay me um, so um, but it does like I said it's nice because they don't interject themselves between yourself and that end client client they force that back to you again so that you you keep the relationship and uh, and sometimes that's how you get uh, additional sales you know uh, somebody likes the way you handle a given order and so they come back again uh, the other thing where Etsy can be helpful is in using their their strength of the combined ordering power that they have to uh, to get better rates for shipping and uh, and packing uh, now I do almost all my own shipping and packing because I'm sending small items. But if you're sending items that are like quilts and they're in big boxes and uh, somebody else can find pricing for you, certainly Etsy's going to get a lot cheaper price than, uh, than you are unless you're a, a much bigger company than I'm, I'm guessing you would be. Uh, so they do help as far as uh, keeping your costs down, which is uh, no small thing. Uh, how does Etsy get paid? Because they don't charge you to become a member. Uh, you know, they, they've already said that you know they bring you on, help you with all of this information, and that doesn't cost anything. Etsy charges a listing fee of 20 cents per item in your shop. I currently, like I said, try to keep it around 100 items, uh, and that uh, that so they would be 20 cents times 100, and that is maintained. Uh, 20 cents covers a four-month period. And it's rebuilt every four months unless you deactivate the, the sale. So every four months, anything that you have on display on your, your seller site will get charged 20 cents per item. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if you end up putting two, 300 pictures in there someday or items, uh, it, it starts to add up. Uh, but it's a four-month period, so it's, it happens three times a year. And, and you totally have the option to, uh, to take photos off. You can take them off entirely or you can actually put them in a holding pen where you're not getting charged anything but you might want to use it later. Maybe you have uh, pictures or artwork of some sort that's uh, seasonally related as an example. Well, you know, after um, in January you can take those all and put them in this holding pen and bring them back out uh, next November, you know, so you don't have to re-enter all those items again. You just have to bring them back to the front. Um, Etsy does take a 3.5% commission off the sale of each order. And the remaining 96.5% is returned to you with a, within a very short time. I find that they pay me, my, my share comes back less than, less than a week usually. So, uh, so that, that's good. Um, and uh, Etsy does charge special service fees for voluntary promoted uh, listing programs. Um, they have some programs, one's called Promoted Listings. And it's very it's a very complicated formula they use to charge you, but basically uh, it's a little bit like if anybody's ever used StubHub versus the, the ticket broker versus um, uh, you know, going directly to a box office for something. <coughs> it's a little bit like that. What you're doing is you're paying a little bit of a premium to get moved up further in the line. <laughs> so if somebody uh, wants a picture of a, a full moon uh, you know, over pine trees and uh, so three people have that and you're in the promoted listings, and you're willing to pay a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, f to move up to the number one out of the three, then that's what promoted listings is. It's kind of bidding for a space in, in line. And uh, the idea is that, uh, you know, that little bit that you pay every month to, uh, to have that occur um, is, uh, is offset by additional sales that you might get because of it. And I, I've, I've not found it's been a tremendous help to me to do that, but it, it, depends, it depends on what you're selling. The seller account, um, obviously it's a business, and you're just going to have to do the taxes for the, on your business and your social security. There is, yes, there is a, uh, if you get the book from Etsy, they have a, a, an excellent description of how to deal with taxes. They will not take out taxes. So you're, res you're as the seller, you're it's like your business. You're responsible for paying those taxes uh, if you have enough sales that it's, it's warranted, obviously. Um, so you need to keep track. And uh, you would, uh, in some cases, it's just, just added as part of the price of the object. You know, you don't go in and add a sales tax separate. You can say, all right, you know, 8% of everything I sell, I'm going to assume is a, is a tax on, on this sale. Because they don't pay for 
um, taxes on when when you sell it or when you when if you, you buy it? if you if you it, the taxes are applied to the sale. If you include that as the part of the sale price, then that ta you still have to keep track of those taxes, so they can be extracted, and you can pay your tax back to the state. Uh, if um, if you, you wanted to have it as a separate item, you could also have it as a separate as a separate sales tax line. But uh, it's it's actually probably easier to have it be built into the price of the item, as long as you keep track of it. But uh, that's one of those things you really need to really get the go through Etsy on that one if you have information. They, they're pretty good about explaining, you know, the better ways to do that and w other ways that are not so good. Other ways to promote uh, shop sales: uh, new shop uh, sale items are automatically uh, promoted by Etsy to your favorite buyers. That's a nice feature. So if I was to go home and replace. 10 of my pictures with 10 new ones, all of my favorite buyers would get that, get a notice that uh, I had added these uh, as new items. Um, connect your Etsy shop. If you, any of you use Pinterest, Facebook, or Twitter accounts, highly recommended that you find a way to connect that to your Etsy account. Um, I'm not familiar, my, my wife's very familiar with Pinterest, I'm not, uh, but Facebook and Twitter accounts, that's not my thing. So. Uh, I'm not, uh, but it is a way to broaden out the, um, you know, the availability of uh, of your your work to to a broader group. Um, uh, use the Etsy promoted listings program. We talked a little about that. Uh, moving up further in the line. Um, once again, I can't explain it enough to say that you have to ensure that your keywords and phrases uh, in the items lists are very strong. That's uh, that's the the best way to get someone to go and look at something that you've you're trying to sell is if you have the keywords match what they're looking for. It's like it's like looking for a job. If you say I'm a dedicated employee, never took any time off from work, and now uh, you know you're, you're probably going to be using all the words that an employer wants to hear. Well, that's kind of what this is with key phrases. If you have the right phrases uh, attached to the picture, the uh, shawl, the whatever, the blanket, whatever it is that you're trying to sell, uh, it, uh, it's far more likely that you're going to get their, get their attention if you're using exactly the same words they are. Uh, and work with the Etsy community groups when they contact you. I'm, I have to admit that I, I've not done a very good job of connecting with any of these groups, not because they're not good at it, but because I'm not good at it, you know, and I'm not quite sure how to, how to go about getting started. I'd like to do that. I've been sort of accidentally added into some of these groups, you know, but I don't really know what, what that does for me at this point. But uh, the community groups supposedly are very helpful in broadening out, you know, uh, the presence uh, of, your, of your site. So, uh, any other questions? Thank you, Tom.